Let's face it, I'm scared of people and I'm definitely scared of talking to them. Growing up, I was terrified when the phone rang in case I was the closest person to it or my parents were busy doing something and there'd be an expectation on me to answer the phone and I'd be like, please God, do not make me answer that phone. It'd be like, what if I answered it and there was a person I didn't know on the other end and then I have to make conversation with them? Or even worse, what if it was somebody I did know but I didn't recognize them and then I felt stupid for not recognizing them? <sighs> yes, I'm an overthinker. Anyway, me and people didn't get on. Like I, I've always been an introvert. I never really needed that interaction with people, but I've also always been scared to go out and talk to people off my own back or anything like that, which makes me incredibly socially awkward. Now you might ask, why would someone who is so terrified of talking to people, especially strangers, decide to start a podcast? And to that I would say, that is a very good question. Well, I was harboring a secret desire to become a YouTuber and I was too scared to fully put myself out there. So the podcast to me was kind of a halfway house. What it meant was that I could interview other people and still have them in the spotlight, but I could just be in the background almost. I mean, I guess I'm not officially in the background, but I could be in the background and just be the person asking the questions. I would effectively give them a platform. Obviously I was a nobody. It was barely a platform that I was giving them, but that was my logic. I was like, okay, I can get away with this, I can justify this to myself. I am not the star of the show by any means. All I'm doing is giving other people a chance to come and talk about themselves. And I very quickly learned that people really, really, really like talking about themselves, which is great because the more talking my guest does, the less talking I have to do. So it seemed like a win-win. Now let's not brush over the fact that I still had to talk to people. And not only that, but I had to reach out to people to ask them to come on the show and then have a conversation with these random people in front of others. Um, turns out that was actually much easier for me and my weird ass little brain. Basically for me, what it meant was that it was in this controlled space and I could almost ask them whatever I wanted under the guise of it's a podcast without me feeling stupid. So maybe if we were just having a conversation, I'd always be second guessing what I should and shouldn't know. And I wouldn't really know if I could probe into different areas in case it was like not the right thing to do or not socially acceptable. But the podcast was a really great way of me going, hang on, I just want to ask you a bunch of questions. I want to pick your brain, so to speak. And this is my way of doing it. So I can ask you a bunch of questions. And even if I'm supposed to know the answer, I can say, hey, we're just doing it for my viewers and my listeners or one of them, but still, that was the kind of way I, I talked myself into it. And so what I learned is actually talking to people isn't that bad, uh, maybe? No, so what I learned is actually I did enjoy those conversations. It was more enjoyable for me to not have to think about all these other things and what I'm supposed to say and what I'm supposed to do and what I'm supposed to know. It was nice to just go, I can have a conversation with this person. I can come to it assuming that I know nothing about them and I can ask them questions and I can just learn more about them. And then over time, the more people that came on, the more people I interviewed, the more people I spoke to, I guess I naturally got better at having that conversation. Internally, I was still terrified and I was still second guessing myself and how I came across and how I sounded and everything about me, obviously. But people were actually coming away from the conversations and they might have been lying, but for the most part, people were coming away from the conversation saying that they really enjoyed it. And with that newfound confidence, I don't know where it came from, it was there. I was like, you know something, I'm gonna reach out to some YouTubers that I really, really like and just test the waters and ask if they would come on the podcast. And you know something, they actually did. I had the likes of Marie Poulin and Tom Buck in the early days and I was so grateful. I was over the moon, I couldn't believe it. I was sitting here in England, just doing my thing one day. And then like a few weeks later, I had a podcast. And a few weeks after that, I was having conversations with the likes of Marie Poulin and Tom Buck, who are genuinely like so, so cool. And I just couldn't believe it. I was like, how is this possible? But it was, and it's just, it's just kind of mind blowing. I even got Gerald and Dunn on the show. That was phenomenal. That whole interaction was I think less than 24 hours between me emailing him in the first place, never, ever, ever expecting him to respond in a million years, to having recorded a podcast episode with him. I just like, <laughs> I, I don't get it. It's amazing. I'm so grateful for these people for seeing this like random person doing this terrible podcast live stream hybrid and going, you know something, I take pity on them. I'm gonna go and join them for an episode. I'm just so, so grateful. And this just really goes to show 
what can happen if you put yourself out there. Like me putting myself out there in the first place and building a bit of a back catalogue to say, hey, I'm serious, I'm doing this thing, not reaching out to, you know, the top YouTubers in the world from episode one and saying, come and be on my podcast. It was just, hey, I've got a group of friends here that I'm just gonna invite on for my first few episodes. I'm gonna find my feet, I'm gonna figure out if I even like it. I'm gonna understand what this podcast is about. And then I'm gonna slowly start reaching out to other people and see what happens. And from that, I was lucky enough to get on one of my favorite YouTubers, uh, if you're watching my favorite YouTuber, um, Ali Abdal. And I think that really kicked things off for me because it was off the back of that that I then joined the part-time YouTuber Academy as a student. And it was from that that I then started my YouTube channel. This dream that I'd been harboring for all these years finally happened because I got a kick up the backside and effectively, not that I should have been waiting for it, but I felt like I was given permission. Like it was okay for me to start this channel. And for that, I'm grateful. Looking back, I would have liked to think that I didn't need the permission, but obviously at the time, that's what I felt I needed. So I'm glad I got it. From being a student in the Part-Time YouTuber Academy to fast forward a few cohorts, to joining the team and leading the operations for the Part-Time YouTuber Academy. I feel like everything's come full circle. I am now in that position where I get to see all these new students, every cohort come in, and be in that position that I was in a year, two, three years ago, where I'm like, I really wanna do this thing, but I'm terrified, I'm scared. I have this fear of putting myself out there. I have this fear of failure. I have this fear of success even. I've got this fear of just doing this thing. And I almost need someone to tell me it's okay. I need someone to say that first video, it was crap, but that's okay. They're supposed to be crap. Like just get out there and do it. And I'm just incredibly grateful to be given that chance. And I wanna do everything I can to help other people that were like me two years ago or like me now. Don't get me wrong, I have not got things figured out. As you can probably tell from this video, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm just doing. And I think that's the most important thing. So in the same way that I have people around me that push me on and give me the motivation and give me the confidence and tell me to keep going and help me, I wanna be that person for the people that are one step behind me. And I guess that's what this video is. It's kind of to say, hey guys, I was terrified too. I I'm still terrified, but the difference is I'm doing it and I want you guys to do it, even though you're terrified. Put yourself out there. You have no idea how your life can change. I have quit my corporate job of 11 years. I have left that world behind me, that world that was not fulfilling, that world that was not satisfying, that world where I knew something was wrong. I had that nagging feeling every day sitting at work that this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing for the rest of my life. Yes, it pays the bills, but at the end of the day, it's not enough. To have put myself out there enough, to be in a position to take advantage of those serendipitous moments and the luck. So whether that was meeting Ali just before we launched his part-time YouTuber Academy, or joining the Academy and finding this amazing community of people that I'm so grateful to have in my life, YouTube is such a lonely thing. I remember sitting alone and wanting to do it and not knowing anyone around me who did it. And therefore, just felt like it wasn't something I could do. The second I was in that academy, everybody around me wanted to be a YouTuber. And all of a sudden it was like this light bulb went off. I was like, oh my God, this is okay. This is cool. This is something I wanna do. There are people that are also in this position and we can do it together. That makes such a difference. So for anyone who's listening, who just needs a little bit of a kick up the backside, like I did, a little bit of motivation or permission to go and do that thing, this is me giving it to you and telling you to go and do that thing. You will feel better in the long run, I promise you. It's hard work. Look, it's 11 o'clock now on a Saturday night and I'm recording this video because I made a promise to myself that I would record a video every week. Now there is a balance here. Please, please, please don't kill yourself. I have been there. Well, obviously I haven't killed myself because I'm still here. I haven't been there. There's also an element of me that never wants to regret the things I didn't do. And that plays on my mind a lot. So. Even if I started a podcast and it was terrible and it failed and I looked like an idiot, then at least I would have tried. Even if I started a YouTube channel and I realized it wasn't what I actually want to do, that would be fine because at least I tried and I knew. Rather than not doing anything and living in regret, always thinking, I really wish I did that. Basically, here's my permission to you. Go make that video, go make that podcast, go and do that thing, whatever it is, you got this. Why are my eyes closing? And I start emailing some YouTubers that I am big fans of. No, kind of doesn't matter. Gosh, I'm thirsty. Oh yeah, hang on, I missed a bit. I need to backtrack. Tech-wise was, there's a lot of air quotes in this video. 